Okay, let's talk about the New York State Teaching Certification Exam for grades 5 through 9. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the math uh, portion of this exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are preparing to take this exam, so that's excellent, which also uh, just through logical thinking that you are going to be a teacher in the great state of New York. So welcome to the video. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching many years, so I know what it's like to take these certification exams, and they um, they are all they're challenging at all levels. So um, if you're not you know really sure what's on this exam, if you haven't really taken a serious look in terms of the math portion of it. Um, although it's grades five through nine, you know, you're like, oh, that's kind of elementary, middle school, beginning of high school. Yeah, I don't really need to know that much math or that much advanced math. Well, that's not the case, okay? You're going to have to know some, a pretty decent amount of advanced high school mathematics, if you will, to do well on this exam. You're also going to need to know the basic stuff as well, um, you know, place value fractions and all that stuff. But you're, this, this particular exam runs a spectrum into high school mathematics. And you know, fairly fairly advanced uh, high school math topics as well. So, what I have here is a practice prom that I'm going to give you a chance to show off your math uh, knowledge here. Of course, I'm going to go uh, uh, and answer it, but we'll kind of uh, mess around with it and learn a little bit about this topic. Uh, but before I get started, I want to let you know too that um, my tablet class program. I have a lot of uh, math courses. I actually have a specific. Uh, New York State uh, Teacher Certification Exam grades 5 through 9, really comprehensive math prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video if that's something you want to take a look at or you might uh, be interested in. So let's get going here at this particular problem. So I don't, I'm not going to give you too many hints here yet, uh, but of course I'm going to walk you through the entire thing here. So I got this, all right, all right, this is, I have something here. And I want to know this. Okay. Now, of course, I'm going to explain all of this, but I don't want to, you know, uh, give you a, you know, steal your opportunity to be like a math whiz and just like, oh, I know what he's talking about. Da 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 da. Okay. So, all right. Given this, tell me what this is. All right. Okay. So let's get into it. So, hopefully, okay. Most of you are like, oh, I know what's going on here. And if you're not even quite sure. You know, if you're like totally lost, if you're totally lost, and by the way, let me just back up here. This would, this is, yes, this this question here is definitely something for sure you would um, have to be able to handle to really be fully prepared for, for this uh, exam. Okay, so it's not like, oh, this is like too advanced, it's not going to be an exam. No, not, not at all. Okay, this is high school level algebra concepts, okay, that we're kind of talking about here. So what I have is a function, okay. I have a function and I want to know the domain of the function. So I'm going to have to know what the word domain is, right? I'm going to have to understand what this symbol is talking about. That's a function, okay? And here is the particular function. Now I kind of made it scarier than it really needs to be because I snuck in some uh, decimals and negative numbers and whatnot, but really this is not that bad, okay? So I'm going to give you a simpler function. All right, so let's take these negative numbers out. Let's just leave it, let's just make it up right now as we go, right? We'll just keep the nine, nine X squared. And then here we'll take out the negative. We'll, leave, we'll keep the two and we'll make it a plus two X. And here we'll just keep plus five. Okay, so I could have given you this problem, all right? But I wasn't feeling so nice. You know, I'm like, yeah, let me kind of throw something out, a little bit of a twist, right? Uh, with this, so I threw in some uh, negative decimals, but it doesn't change the nature of this problem. It just looks a little bit more intimidating. But really what we have is a function, okay? Now this function, these two functions are the same type of functions. Now i like you to kind of uh, think back to your last time you took a math class. Maybe that's, uh, it all depends where you're coming from. If you're, obviously if you're taking this uh, teacher certification exam, you've at least taken, you know, some math and um, college, maybe college algebra, or maybe you're back in high school algebra two, pre-calculus, maybe some of your calculus, whatnot. But tell me, what type of function is this? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It starts with a Q. Okay, starts with a Q. All right, so if you answered a quadratic function, 
you would be correct. Now, how do we know? Well, we have a what we call a polynomial. We have this x squared and it's, it's this x in its highest power 2, then we have an x, etc. So this is what we call a quadratic function. Okay, so this is a quadratic function, okay, or a quadratic equation, but because it's written with this little function notation, we would refer to it, um, its proper uh, uh, reference would be a quadratic function. Okay, so this guy here, the original problem, is also a quadratic function. I'm just really focusing in on the variables. Okay, so it's a quadratic function. So if you if you're if you looked at it, you're like, okay, it's some sort of quadratic thingamajiggy. Then that's pretty good, right? I give you credit for that. Now here is the next question: With quadratic functions, what's the shape of the graph? Okay, what is the graph or the general shape of the graph of a quadratic function? Think about that for a second. Okay, so it starts with a P, okay? All right, did you guess it? All right, no, not yet. Here, I'll give you, I'm going to kind of draw the general shape of it. All right, now how about that? Okay, <laughs> so hopefully 99% of you out there watching that are screaming at the video like, yeah, I got it, I got it. It's a parabola. So if you said parabola, then that's awesome. You're absolutely right. So the graph, okay, graph of a quadratic function is going to be some sort of parabola, which is some sort of U-shaped type of deal. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Okay, and I don't, and I don't even need to know this specific, to answer this question, Okay, I don't even really need to know the specific graph of this function. All right, that's that's the key. Okay, when you know your math here, that's draw this a little better. You know your math. Sometimes you're going to be given, um, you know, the test makers are going to, <clears throat> excuse me, give you questions to kind of throw you off or like intimidate you. You know, like uh, they're like, oh, you know, you're going to be wrapped up into like figuring out or trying to graph this or whatnot. If you if you know what's going on mathematically, you'd be like, oh yeah, I don't even really need to know. I just need to know that this is a quadratic function. In this case, it's going to be, it's either going to open up like this or down, all right? In this case, because there's a negative here, it's going to open down, but it's going to be something like this, all right? And this is not the actual graph, so if you have it, don't worry about it, because where it crosses the x-axis is the... Uh, uh, the roots, if in fact it does, okay, that's a whole nother topic. It doesn't make a difference in this case. It's going to be some sort of upside down U on X, uh, Y uh, coordinate plane, okay? So because I want to know the domain of this function, all right, the answer, let me give you the answer out there. The domain, uh, this particular function is a set of all real numbers. So if you got that right, then that's excellent. But uh, if you're like, oh, okay, I don't even know what he's talking about, let's continue on with the, uh, explaining what's going on here. So if I could see what's going on with this graph, right, you can see that this graph, think of it as the width of this graph, okay? Like how wide is this graph going to go? Think about the width. The width would be like the x-axis. Well, the graph is going to continue on, right? It's going to get wider, wider, and wider, and wider. It's going to keep going, going, right? I mean, I'm going to keep, I can't, keep scrolling down forever, but it's pretty much going to be going like this forever and ever. It's going to get continuously wider. So how much of the x-axis is it going to span? Well, it's going to span the entire x-axis. And what numbers are on the entire x-axis? Well, here's zero, and here's all the positive numbers, and here's all the negative numbers. This is negative infinity. This is positive infinity. So collectively, all of these guys put together is the entire set of real numbers. Okay, real numbers. Okay, that's what we uh, references to. So you got you have to be familiar with um, these terms. Uh, what are the set of real numbers? What's domain? All that kind of stuff. Remember, uh, let's just kind of look back at this exam. You're talking grade nine. Okay, grade nine. You very well could be teaching algebra one. These are algebra one concepts, okay, that I'm talking about a lot of this stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more advanced with the domain uh, and range. I'm not going to get into the range here, but basically what this means is the following, that I can find, okay, the domain of a function is the input values. It's the input values of the, of the function, right? Now, what does that mean? Well, here, 
let's look at this original function. What can I plug in to this function? All right? What numbers can I plug in? Well, you can plug in any real number, any real number. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, pick any number along the x-axis. I could pick negative 100, negative 10 billion. I could pick a positive uh, 20 trillion point zero three. I could pick uh, zero. I could pick a fraction. It doesn't make a difference. Any number along this x-axis, entire x-axis, anything, I can plug it in to this function. And when I do all these calculations, some number is going to pop out. Okay, like a number will be generated. So the domain is the, and I can really get deep into domain and range of functions. This is not the video for it. Okay, I don't want to go too far off on a tangent because I got to stop myself from teaching. I like to teach so much. <laughs> this is where you really want to kind of get into my full course. But the domain is um, essentially what are the allowable numbers that we can plug into the function without breaking it. Okay. Now there are for some functions there's restrictions on numbers that you cannot plug into that to that um, function. Let's just take a look at one example. F of x equals um, x minus five over x. Okay. Let's say this was our function. Can you think of one number? Okay. One or two numbers that we cannot plug into this function without breaking something, without blowing the function up. Yes, you can blow a function up in, in algebra. Well, f of zero. If I try to plug in zero, right there, I'm looking at my number line here. Here's zero. I'm like, oh, it's part of the real numbers. I'm going to plug it in. So what I'm uh, f of zero is going to be what? Okay. In this particular case, I'm giving myself some room. It's going to be zero minus five. No problem there, because zero minus five is negative five. But I have zero in the denominator. You are not allowed to have zero in the denominator. So any number that you plug into your function that causes a zero in the denominator blows this function up, okay? And the set of real numbers, okay? kind of like boom. So like can't have it. So zero, you're like, sorry, you can't play with our function. You have to be, be removed, you're not allowed. So the domain of this function would not include the number zero, okay? It would not include the number zero. So all of the numbers are fine, but not zero. So there, uh, there are, um, you know, we have to study functions to look to see if there's any restrictions that we need to place on certain numbers that can, that can blow us up. And, so, and sometimes it's uh, certain numbers or ranges of numbers, okay? But this is a huge topic, extremely important in um, algebra. And again, grades five to nine, you could be teaching algebra one. And remember, you need to know a lot more than your student. You can't just be like a like okay I kind of get what's going on. You have to be like the master. Uh, you have to be, have complete command of this topic. Okay, if you're going to teach it, you really got to you know be like you know uh, be totally competent about it. That's why I'm kind of talking deep here, right? But I'm still I'm kind of uh, scratching the surface. That's why you know there's a good amount of math that you really got to study for. Uh, to, so if you haven't started studying for this exam, even if you were good in math, it doesn't make a difference. You need to go back and, and brush up uh, on it because if you find yourself maybe in a position where you have to teach math at this, you know, even at the eighth grade or seventh grade, it doesn't make a difference. You know, you, you, you want to know your stuff. Okay, so again, the answer to this uh, particular problem is the domain of the set, is the set of all real numbers. So hopefully you're like, you don't regret watching this video. <laughs> That's certainly not my, uh, uh, you know, intent. But, you know, I, I'm trying to be um, also very, you know, direct and honest with you about, you know, um, really striving to be the best you can in terms of math. But let's go ahead and wrap it up. That's enough fun for today in terms of math. Uh, so, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for like 12 years, have hundreds and hundreds of videos. So if you like my teaching style, you want to learn more like specific math stuff, I got lots of different material on my uh, channel. So hopefully you consider subscribing. I'm, I'm posting videos all the time, videos like this, advice videos, but I have a lot of actual um, instructional videos. Um, of course, if you really want to see my best work, um, I would definitely encourage you to check out my New York State uh, teacher certification exam grades five through nine full math prep course. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Really, really comprehensive. I think you'll like uh, what you see there. But if you like this video and learned something, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback um, 
are you new to teaching? Are you are you planning to teach? You know, uh, maybe tenth, eleventh grade, kind of go higher uh, up. Of course, that's another certification exam. Or maybe you're coming from the elementary level. I actually started in high school math, and then I taught middle school, thinking that was going to be. Uh, different or easy. It was definitely different, but it wasn't easier necessarily. I think a lot of times if you, you don't want to make that mistake as a teacher, uh, especially like, oh, I teach high school. It's much more challenging. And those elementary teachers, yeah, they don't have to teach the advanced stuff like I do. Yeah, uh, until you've been an elementary teacher, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't think I would have made a good elementary teacher. It's it's challenging. So all teachers, all levels, all subjects, you know, it's a profession. That's why you got to take these uh, certification exams. So you'll be challenged, but the rewards are there as well. And you know you got to just keep um, striving to get through your uh, certification exams, and just get in the mindset that you're going to be doing you know continuous education as a teacher. That's the nature of teaching, but it is definitely um, you know uh, worth it to do it. Okay, and, and unfortunately, though, sometimes only fellow teachers know what we go through. But uh, hopefully, I was able to help you out, and I wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for spending some time for me today, and have a great day.